Let's talk a little bit about the test, because this is really the second phase of the tyranny. The first phase was to get you afraid of a novel version of coronavirus. Oh, this is different from any cold or flu you've ever seen. Well, no, actually, no. Uh, and so when that doesn't work, uh, now, and, and they inflate the case fatality rates by lying to people, uh, saying people who died with coronavirus, died from coronavirus, that it was the underlying cause, no matter how many comorbidities they have, no matter how old they are. As a matter of fact, we got an article today that's highlighted on the Drudge Report. Got a 91-year-old man who served 11 administrations in Washington, 11 presidents. He dies of coronavirus. See that? He could survive through 11 different presidents, but he dies of coronavirus. I tell you, this, this really is unlike any disease we have ever seen before, right? No. No, actually. You look at that, and first of all, you say, well, the guy must be very old. Turns out he is. He's 91. You know what the life expectancy here in America is? 79. He had a long life. God bless him. And <clears throat> uh, I don't know if he died from coronavirus. I don't even know if he died with coronavirus because they are presuming that people have coronavirus when they die. So we don't know if he even had it for sure. All right? Uh, did he die from it when he's 91 years old? Uh, most likely he had other health issues. Uh, newsflash, you're going to die. You might want to think about that and what happens after you die. And be a little bit more concerned about that uh, than, uh, you know, staying in your apartment or whatever. Here's a good example. Uh, a woman who uh, uh, in, um, uh, went to her doctor. Uh, she was having some symptoms. She was having some breathing problems. Uh, she thought she was having a medical emergency on April 16th. She drove to the hospital. She was swabbed for COVID-19. The results were negative. The next morning, they tested her again for a host of other coronaviruses, not just the novel coronavirus. Still, negative results. Two days later, the doctor ordered a third set of tests. Once again, it was negative. Now, she's been tested three times for coronavirus. She said this time he comes in head to toe in PPE, uh, personal protective equipment, completely covered. And he goes, I'm absolutely convinced you have COVID-19. <laughs> he must be working for the CDC. They are on three tests. They all come back negative, but he's still convinced. And so he uh, labels her as a COVID patient and tells her to go into quarantine. Uh, she says, I, I believe the tests, not his intuition. He's got a feeling about it. He just feels it, right? It's not science, is it? I've got a feeling you have COVID-19. <laughs> uh, so she doesn't go into quarantine. And then she gets in trouble, right? Because now she's got a COVID-19 diagnosis. She can't see her primary care doctor to actually do something about <coughs> what is really the problem. And, of course, this problem is happening to people all over the country for various things. You've got a heart issue? No, no, no. If it's not COVID-19, you can't go to the hospital. i got this lump that I'm worried about that's growing very rapidly, and I need to get a, a test to see if I've got cancer. No, no, no. That's not essential. Uh, you know, I've got this toothache that is killing me, and it's, <laughs> it's abscess. No, no, no. It's not COVID-19. You can't do anything about it. This is the insanity that we're living under. But yeah, okay, so we get the test. He doesn't believe the test. Well, you know what? I don't believe the test either. I don't believe the government statistics either. They've always lied to us, and they're lying to us in spades right now. Here's an example. In the UK, they're doing diagnostic tests that involve taking saliva and nasal samples from the same patient. And they're counting it as two positive test results if it comes back positive. So take two samples, one from your nose, one from your mouth, and if you've got COVID-19, according to the test, they count that twice. They're double counting it. Double counting it. Tens of thousands of coronavirus tests have been double counted. Why would they do that? Because, folks, this is the second phase of inflating the statistics to create fear, panic, and to advance their agenda. And the next agenda is to quarantine, to imprison you, not necessarily in your house, into these other facilities that we've talked about and to control your travel, and to give you an immunity passport and so forth. The next step is the testing, and they've got to get everybody scared about that.
about the spread of this. Then there's this. So in the UK, they're testing people's noses and their mouths. If it's positive, that's two. That's two. <laughs> and the CDC is kind of doing <laughs> something almost as stupid. CDC acknowledged yesterday that it is combining the results from viral and antibody COVID-19 tests when reporting the country's total tests, even though there's a very big difference. Because what they're saying is, is that um, the viral testing is to understand how many people are getting infected, whereas the antibody testing is looking in the rearview mirror. It says, hey, these people maybe had it at some point in time. Maybe they didn't have any symptoms at all. They never knew they had it, but their body, their immune system worked, shut it down, created the antibodies. But look, you know, we got another test. And so they take that, even though the people never had any symptoms, they never got sick, their body operated properly and stopped this novel coronavirus, and they never even knew it. They're going to count that as new threats. These are new cases. We've got to do something about them. No, it's past. You're looking in the rearview mirror. These people handled it themselves. They don't need any medical care, right? But they're counting both of those. And so you have uh, these doctors, uh, you have even the Harvard Global Health Institute said, uh, you've got to be kidding me. How can the CDC make that kind of mistake? This is a mess. This is a mess. Oh, yeah, it's much worse than that. Because when you take a look at the PCR tests, and again, uh, John Rappaport, uh, we had him on at the very, very, very beginning of all this, and he was saying, yeah, the PCR test cannot be, uh, uh, are, are not telling you anything. And that's what they're doing to say that somebody's got the virus. Uh, and uh, we'll have him talk about that again. But to, just to sum it up, the inventor of PCR, Kerry Mullis, said these PCR tests cannot detect infectious free viruses at all. That's the guy who invented the PCR test. It was invented to have bits of genetic material in a sample multiplied until those small broken pieces were numerous enough to be able to be seen under a microscope. PCR just helps scientists observe small things in greater quantity. Where, uh, where those bits of genetic material came from, what they do, whether or not there's enough of them to make somebody sick, etc., the PCR process is not involved in that determination whatsoever. And so when we look at that aspect, now let's take a look at the, uh, uh, the antibody issue as well. There's also issues with the antibody testing. Canadian author, antibody testing for COVID-19, says the only jurisdiction with a formal structure for approval of antibody tests is in the United States. But until very recently, it was a complete joke, as the test manufacturers did not need to provide validation data. Now it's only a partial joke. <laughs> so validation data must be provided. But the FDA can only do a paper analysis. Imagine if an automobile manufacturer had to build cars to certain EPA standards. But rather than sending a car to the EPA for testing, the automobile manufacturer could test it themselves and say, yeah, we tested it, it works. So there's questions about whether or not the antibody testing works. There's questions about whether or not the PCR, well, there's not really any question about whether or not PCR testing works. We know it doesn't work. And yet the CDC is saying, we've got PCR tests over here, we've got antibody tests over here, put them all together, and you got trouble with a capital T, and that rhymes with V, and that stands for virus, okay? And we're going to shut the country down because we've got some people who have come up with this. And to give you an idea of the consequences of this, it's not just destroying and eradicating the middle class, it's also destroying your food supply. 570 workers were tested positive at a North Carolina poultry plant out of 20. 2,200 workers, the majority of them had absolutely no symptoms. Have they been exposed to it? They didn't even know it. They had antibodies that took care of it. We don't know. But shut it down. You're not going to get any chicken. So because of these tests, starve. That's why your sh grocery store shelves are empty. We'll be right back. John Rappaport, stay with us. We're living in insanely dangerous times. And I told folks, 
going back three months ago. I'm not buying storable food because I'm worried about the COVID-19 virus. I'm worried about the food shortages and the economic collapse. And now it's admitted that a chain reaction has begun that's already caused food shortages and the collapse of farms and ranches across the United States. And it's even worse in the third world. So I hope Trump with his initiatives can clean this up and fix it. But with the election fraud and the COVID-19, all the wars and the third world collapsing and everything else that's going on, now is the time to get storable foods because they'll last for 25 years. They're in easily totable bags. It's high quality food and it's good to have that box checked off to be ready. And it funds the InfoWars. So we have storable food available again. InfoWarsStore.com or call toll free 888 But Whatever you do, get prepared and get ready because the globalists want you dependent on them. They do not want you to be self-sufficient. Get your storable food at InfoWarsStore.com right now while you still can. 